the demon of pornography. My original title was The Scourge of Pornography, but it's really a demon at its very roots. Galatians chapter 5 verse 9 says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. The first two, adultery, fornication. We're talking about the demon of pornography. It said the average age a child in America is exposed to pornography is 11. But those uh, that feedback's about two years old or more. I would say it's probably now closer to nine years of age. Listen to these stats. About 68%, that's a full two-thirds or two out of every three people sitting in a local church congregation on a Sunday morning are dabbling in pornography. That's two out of three people in church on a Sunday morning are dabbling in pornography. And worse yet, around 50%, one of every two pastors check pornography from time to time too, if not being snared by it. My son Luke was about 13 years of age. And we didn't have these various multiple online media platforms at that time. We did have emails. And I had an email coming now. His mom had passed away, so it was just Luke and me in the house. His bedroom, the other side of the house, I was in the master bedroom. And I had an incoming email. And just by reading the subject matter in the, in the subject box, the text in the subject box, you knew it was filth, porn. And there was a link in the body. All I had to do was click on the link. And that's it. I felt the Holy Spirit say to me. Before I could delete that email. Call your son. I called out Luke. Son. And he heard me. He said yes dad. Please come here son. I said son please read the line. He was about 13 years of age. Please read that line in the subject box of this email. And he read it. He's an excellent, outstanding reader. I said, my son, dad wants you to know there's nobody here. Mom's not around now. Only the Holy Spirit and I. Dad wants you to know that God, the Holy Spirit, has given dad the overcoming ability and power to delete this email without clicking on that link. And in front of him, I hit delete and completely erased it. He remembers that till today. And that's at least 12 years ago. In baseball, we have first base, second base, third base, and home plate, right? I teach around the world that first base, I mean, no matter where the batter hits the ball, if it's a fair ball, even if it's a home run, he's got to run the bases and he must touch first base First, his foot must touch first base first, or else he gets tagged, he's out. First base for every believer, not just pastor, everyone who says they know Christ as Savior, must be the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 9.10 says, The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. It's first base in every believer's life. So obviously, these two-thirds of congregation members and 50% of pastors either don't have or have lost the fear of God. And that is a shocking statistic and tragic condition to find the church in today. It, you know what pornography does? It's degrading, demeaning, and devaluing to all women. That includes your mother and your sister. It's degrading, demeaning, and devaluing to all women. It just makes sex objects out of them. I remember in university here in India, uh, for the first time our college, which was a boys only university, admitted girls, sort of 80, 80 students. Suddenly there were about 10 girls. And boy, 
they were the specialty of the month, of the day. However, some of the boys, a percentage of them, began to scratch obscenities using these girls' names onto the wooden desks. It was brought to the attention of our principal, who was a diminutive little man, but strong. And he came in one day, so softly and quietly, and said, Gentlemen, it has been brought to my attention that some of the boys' students are scribbling or scratching obscenities about some of the female students in your class. I just have one simple question to ask you, gentlemen. How would you like it, and how would you feel if that were written by someone about your mother or your sister? Thank you very much. Have a nice day. And he trundled out of the lecture hall. Soft but potent. Back to this percentage of people in the church. If such a high percentage of people in the church and in pastoral and leadership, pastoral and leadership positions, if such a high percentage are involved in such a base and perverse activity, how can we say we are following the truth as opposed to those of other faiths? When in our actions, we aren't any better or different than them. Pornography hurts marriages. It ruins and then breaks up marriages. Ask. I've heard of men asking and expecting weird stuff from their wife. A woman one time called me internationally and was broken about what her husband was requiring of her to do, which was never the case in the beginning of the years of their marriage until he allowed the demon of pornography to latch on to his soul. I said it destroys families and these are from persons, these incidences are from persons who shared with us personally over years of ministry. One lady shared with me, a wife, that her marriage was over the first night. They were married, they went home, and he said, let's turn on some porn and watch this to get into the mood. First night, she said, and she met him in the church. And he wants to begin the marriage on a perverted note. She said, my marriage was over the wedding night itself. This man, I said, she met in the church. It was more like meeting a wolf in sheep's clothing. And by the way, there's a high percentage of single adults, because we talk about married people in adultery. There's a high percentage of single adults fornicating and they think, oh, well, we're single. It's okay. It's not okay. If you're a married person sleeping with another person, that's the sin of adultery. If you're a single person sleeping with another person, that's the sin of fornication. And even young people in the youth programs of churches, I've talked with a couple of youth leaders, the estimates I get are from, say, 25 to 30 percent, they believe, of their own youth who are sexually active and promiscuous. Wow. And maybe that's a conservative percentage. What about younger children, even our teenagers? Parents allowing unlimited Internet access on your child's cell phone or mobile phone is like putting a hand grenade in the palm of your child's hand. Parents, did you know you can lock your child's PC or tablet or cell or mobile phone with a safe browser or internet filter? Did you know that? This is hugely important. Have a conversation with your child. It said about 22% of children have accessed porn by the age of 10. Remember, even if you place blocks on their cell phone, they could still be exposed to it from a friend's phone. So warn your children. You've got to talk to your children. Have a conversation with them about this. Warn them about school friends and about neighbor children. Again, I'm speaking from experience. He said, my child wouldn't, but your neighbor child. 
Oh, but they're Christians. Hear the statement. There are Christians and there are Christians. We need to be on guard, my friend. Consider a ministry like Focus on the Family in Colorado Springs, Colorado, for resources to help you with your child or your children. Remember, children are like the rest of us fallen, unregenerate humanity. And our children will tend to go down to the LCD. That's a mathematics expression. But here I mean lowest common denominator. Until such time our children get well and truly born again and become spiritually mature enough in Christ. We as parents, it's our responsibility to set guards around them. We have walls around them. And we lock the doors at night so they can sleep in peace. But if we do not put these filters in place on their cell phone, like I said, we've put a live hand grenade in the palm of their hand. Scripture says all sin is bad. But to fall prey to sexual sin is horrible. For we make ourselves one with another person. And thereby defile ourselves with just Clarified it's adultery if you're married or fornication if you're a single person. 1 Corinthians 6:16 6, says, What? Don't you know that he who joins himself to a harlot or a prostitute is become one body with her? For the two, scripture says, become one flesh. So this is one of the most abhorrent things we can do because this body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Oh my friend, I could share of egregious. You know what egregious sin is? Over the top, disgusting, debauched. I could share of egregious sexual immorality by pastors and leaders of churches, but it's not going to edify the saints. What I do share now is limited in scope and it's for the sake of caution and warning only. Pastors, leaders in extramarital affairs, get the women they have affairs with to have abortions to cover their sin in their tracks. There's years of such behavior by some pastors and leaders. Some of them are repeat offenders after the crocodile tears. They go right back to it. Others are multiple offenders, serial sexual offenders, preachers and leaders in the church. And the wives often suffer in silence. Not always, but often. Remember, these are personal. I know these people. They are pastors, ministers, and Bible college heads. A church in Fiji Islands, after preaching, I then, we had an altar call, people came up for prayer, and there were quite a high percentage of demonic manifestations from the people that I was praying for along with my wife. It surprised me. I've never had that high percentage of demon-possessed people in the church coming up. The demons began to manifest as we were praying for them. I find out later that the senior pastor of that very church I preached at was himself in an adulterous affair through that time. It wasn't a little crack in the armor. The door was wide open. Come in, Lucifer. Come into my church. As the senior pastor, I opened the door to welcome you. And I'm called there, ignorant of the facts, preach the word, but when we came to pray for people, the demons began to shake them and manifest. Lord Jesus, be merciful. A wide open door to Satan. Another, and, and these are knowledgeable that I know personally. One, another pastor in India. The, the previous one was Fiji Islands. This is in India. He is in a relationship with the estranged wife of a brother I know personally well. Do you think my source isn't good enough? He's the husband of the lady. So his marriage is completely, they're estranged from each other, still legally married, and the pastor is in an adulterous affair. Of course, he doesn't attend that church anymore, but his wife does. 
Wow. And this way, brazenly, this pastor is still living the high life while in an adulterous affair, still preaching on TV. Did you hear me? Being broadcast on TV. And you know how he's living the high life? Top model car or cars through gifts and donations from Western churches and people. I describe the Western church like this. Don't get offended, but I've got to speak it out, the truth. With two Gs, many Western believers, especially America, have seen this. American Christians and churches and leaders are the most generous people on the face of the earth. And they are the most gullible too. I pray if you're an American leader listening to this, that is a wake-up call. Honestly, my experience with the Australian pastors, they're a bit more savvy. They're geographically closer to these developing countries, and they've got to They've been burned many more times than the average American church believer or pastor. So this guy lives a high life in an adulterous affair, drives the finest of cars, and gives expensive gifts to the lady friends. These sins, by the way, are no less in the Western church. But I just thought, since I'm moving around in these developed con developing countries, to give you a clue of what's happening right now we need to pray even fast and pray that god will cleanse his church and hear me now when i say the next statement lord jesus start that cleansing work in me start that cleansing work in me in my heart no more friend don't tell me yeah i'm a christian i go to church but you know what i've got an excuse look at the lives of samson Solomon, David, those are my excuses. If they could get away with it, why can't I? I've had another believer tell me this while he's messing around with a woman other than his wife. Amazing. These, let me tell you, these biblical names, Samson, David, Solomon, they were carried away with their own lusts. Un condoned by God. God never condoned multiple wives. Never condoned in scripture. And you know what happened because these men in high position got involved in these kind of affairs? It brought them down. And if they didn't fall from power, hear me now, it's permanently stained their legacy. It stained their legacy. Yes, they made it into heaven. But what a stain on their legacy. Look to Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit without measure. Enough is enough. We're talking to the church and to leaders. 1 Peter 4.17 says, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin with us, what shall the end of them that do not obey the gospel be? Wow, friend, if God begins house cleaning with errant ministers and Christians, what will the fate of the ungodly be? Even so, the Apostle John says in Revelation, Even so, come Lord Jesus, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Roman Catholic priests, we all know what's happened and been exposed over the last couple of decades. But you know, this is the fallout from an unscriptural yoke that has been placed over their necks by the Vatican that they have to be single and celibate. So this is the fallout. And so we hear of the debauched lifestyle of many priests and the ruination of many innocent altar boys as a result of that unscriptural yoke that has been placed upon them. However, Rome will account to God for that. What about people like me? Protestant, quote-unquote, Bible-believing ministers who are allowed to marry and have a wife and still have an affairs. What excuse do we have? So before my fellow Protestants start casting stones at the Catholic priests, let's look in the mirror first. We have less 
ground to stand on. In fact, we have no leg to stand on. So in our case then, Protestant ministers, elders and leaders who fall into this, it's pure lust of the flesh. When I'm asked to do the benediction in many a church, I usually quote the end of the book of Jude, which is just one chapter. Verses 24 and 25, let me read it to you and you'll understand why this is my favorite benediction of all. I pray over the church and for myself in benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep you and me from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Why do I pray that? Because our boast can never be in ourselves. For the scripture says, in ourselves dwells no good thing. But it is He, it is my God, my Savior, my Jesus, who thus far has kept me from falling. And I still need to cling to the old rugged cross until the day He returns in the clouds to take us to be with Him or till the day He calls me home. So I will cling to the old rugged cross. I want to end here. There's a quote from a well-renowned preacher, John MacArthur. And I apply this. I totally agree with him on this point. There's some things I vary from him a bit, but he's been a consistent uh, expositor of the word. He, uh, We want to apply this to all ministers, pastors, and leaders who have fallen into egregious sin. The dictionary definition of egregious is outstandingly bad, shocking, egregious. Those who have fallen into egregious sin, horrific sexual sin. Here's what he says, and I quote, Shouldn't we be eager to restore our fallen brethren to fellowship? Yes, but not to leadership. It's not an act of love to return a disqualified man to public ministry. It is an act of disobedience. And two more quotes in closing. If you play with sin, you or I, if you play with sin, sin will play with you. Sin will take you farther than you want to go. Sin will keep you longer than you want to stay. And sin will cost you more than you can ever pay. May God have mercy on us all. Thank you.